Tonight on Cougar News, some unique athletes showcase their talents in the Santa Clarita Valley. Plus, find out who Sammy Clarita is and why people are looking for him. Also, Castaic Lake holds a major open water swimming event. Cougar News starts now. This is Cougar News. Hello and welcome to Cougar News. I'm Rachel Maurer. And I'm George Ventura. Here's the latest from the Cougar Newsroom. Addiction is a disease that is hard to get under control, but after 10 overdoses in one day, Santa Clarita is doing everything it can to help addicts get clean. Jacob Sykes and Marisa LaPlante have more. Heroin continues to be a major issue in the Santa Clarita Valley. His father called me up and he said, Alex died, and I said, what? We don't start paying attention to our children now when they're young and hardwire this thinking, we're in trouble. Our kids are in trouble. After an unprecedented nine overdoses and one death that occurred in a 24-hour period last month, groups like The Way Out Recovery and Action Family Counseling have begun campaigning harder for addiction recovery. People are looking at all the alcoholics and addicts that we come across as bad people. They're not bad people. They're hurt people. David Alexander Esquivel overdosed here at Bouquet Canyon Park in the men's bathroom, where he unfortunately died. Another user overdosed in the bathroom of the urban home in Valencia. Their friends quit thinking and calling 911 ultimately saved their life. Usually they, they see that we're not there just to, to arrest and, and prosecute. That's not our, our main goal and it's usually just getting that conversation started. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we try and reach out to the parents. Um, we come to the TIDE program, we talk to the kids um, so that we can get that conversation started and let them know that we are there to help. Getting clean and sober is easy. You just gotta change everything, especially your thinking. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, Please seek help and call any of these numbers. For more information around the Santa Clarita Valley, check out our website, CougarNews.com. Last week, the Santa Clarita Valley's Sheriff's Department led a drug raid and took five suspected drug dealers into custody. To leave anonymous tips, call the non-emergency sheriff's line at 661-255-1121. Santa Clarita, like many cities, has a long cultured history. It also has a history of racism and hate speech. College of the Canyons recently held an event that dealt with the idea of hate speech. Here's Shed Book Out with more on that. Should hate speech be recognized as free speech in America? This is the question recently posed in a recent debate between professors Matthew Rungaitis and Pamela Williams Piaz at College of the Canyons, with hardline stances on the topic taken by both professors in the open forum. Despite the many cases taken before the Supreme Court in the name of free speech, the Constitution does not presently have any coverage towards hate speech, nor is there any language that defines what hate speech exactly is. Professor Piaz has a specific idea of what constitutes hateful speech, however. Hate speech, uh, by definition, is defined as any kind of language or gesture or speech that is an attack or a direct offense, physical or symbolic, against a person based on their identity. Despite the negativity displayed in such speech, there is a controversy found by some, not in the content of the speech, but the perceived inability to speak it. The freedom of speech is the right to express any opinion um, without censorship or you know, restraint. And so you are entitled to share your opinion in the face of disagreement and offense. Limiting hate speech is also limiting distress, limiting attacks on people, limiting hate. So I don't think it's a negative at all. Those in opposition to the very idea of hate speech won't actually argue whether it is protected under free speech laws. Indeed, if former mayor of Santa Clarita Bob Keller is free to say this, I'm a proud racist, then Santa Clarita residents are free to say this. There's a huge difference between a dialogue that is diverse and civil and a dialogue that is aimed at targeting particular people with words that often have physical manifestations later down the road. Hate speech is recognized as free speech, and many agree that it should stay this way. However, all actions can be met with reactions, and hate speech should always be countered with free speech outlining where the problem lies. For Cougar News, I'm Jed Bookout. Graduation is here, and this year there will be over 2,000 students receiving their degree this spring. Of the 2,000, there will be more than 800 graduates walking in this year's ceremony, which is the largest in CLC history. If you are planning on walking June 2nd, you must arrive at 6.45 a.m. Friday in your cap and gown in parking lot 9B, which is located 
in between the softball field and the West PE building. The ceremony will begin promptly at 8 a.m. in the Honor Grove and is estimated to last until 11. Due to the seating capacity, each graduate can only invite six guests to the ceremony. Have you ever struggled to find parking at the beginning of every semester? Starting in the fall of 2017, College of the Canyons will begin the construction of a new parking structure for the Valencia campus. The building is expected to add up to 1,600 new parking spots. Vanessa Marcone has more information on this story. TOC is moving forward with the construction of the new parking garage building. The college decided to increase the number of parking spaces to better accommodate the students for the following semesters. So we're building a, a new parking structure uh, that altogether will add uh, a thousand new parking spaces to the Valencia campus. So that's a big improvement and I think students will be excited uh, to see that uh, when it's done. The new structure uh, will be located at the corner of Valencia Boulevard and Rockwell Canyon Road and it'll be three levels. So uh, if you're familiar with that parking lot, it actually sits uh, just below street level. Um, so when it's built, it'll only look like it's, it's two stories. So uh, it'll blend in uh, very nicely uh, to the campus. So construction is expected sometime in the fall. Um, it's, it's too soon to tell uh, when exactly construction will start. Uh, so the plans have to be reviewed by the Department of the State Architect. And once they give us the green light, uh, then we're clear to go ahead and begin construction. The new facility will add about 1,000 parking spaces to the Valencia campus, but with the new construction, many parking spots will be unavailable, creating a concern among students. Honestly, I think it's kind of ridiculous that for a whole semester, the lot eight is going to be closed. Parking right now, as it is, is kind of really difficult. But I think it's going to be amazing once it's done. But if they can find out a way to do it during an off semester, like maybe during the winter or summer, that would be much appreciated by all of the students. The construction of the parking building is expected to be finished by the summer of 2018. This is Vanessa Marcon for Cougar News. You hear about what happened in Manchester? I did, George. Sam Joseph is going to tell us more. Ariana Grande is returning to Manchester this Sunday for a benefit concert after the deadly attack that took place last week. Grande is rounding up various artists including Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, Coldplay, Pharrell Williams and many more for the One Love Manchester show. All of the money raised through ticket sales and donations will go to an emergency fund set up by the British Red Cross and the City of Manchester to help the victims of the bombing. In other news, 14-time major champion Tiger Woods was found asleep in his illegally parked car Monday morning by Palm Beach County Sheriffs. He was arrested for suspected DUI. Woods admitted to being on several prescription medications, including Vicodin. He released a statement apologizing for his behavior, inciting an unexpected reaction to prescription medication. Also this Friday, Wonder Woman hits, the hits theaters starring Gal Gadot, who plays the first ever female lead in a superhero movie. The film is released at a time when gender equality is a hot topic in Hollywood, and it is also the first live-action film with a budget of over $100 million to be directed by a woman. Wonder Woman is predicted to be one of the summer's biggest blockbusters. And that's what's trending. I'm Sam Josen. For more stories in and around the Santa Clarita Valley, you can check us out at cougarnews.com. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Sam. After working in a profession for such a long time, it's unusual for a person to change it up at the drop of a hat. For Lisa Hooper, the change was for the better. Here's Marissa Scott with the story. Lisa Hooper, former head coach for the COC women's volleyball team, spends her days much differently than she used to. Lisa made the decision last year to take on the role as head of curriculum after the previous chair decided to step down. She had been in that capacity for eight years and was um, considering stepping down and thought of me as a person who would be capable of replacing her. Before Lisa ran curriculum, she spent her days and nights coaching the women who would come in and out of the COC volleyball program. I think more, more than anything, she missed working with the, the young women that she coached. She drew incredible uh, mentoring relationships with those young women. Lisa coached the COC women's volleyball team for 19 years, and she loved every single second of it. Those little moments in practice where, you know, you've just created a, a learning environment where somebody can accomplish something that they didn't think that they could otherwise. Those are the things that I miss. Although she loved what she did, she decided it was time for a career change when her demands as a head coach started to grow larger every year. 
it happened to correspond to a time when I was feeling like coaching was an ever increasing demand on my time. Lisa's family, friends, and coworkers supported the bold decision she made. You know what? I was excited for her. Coaching is a huge responsibility and it's a huge uh, drain on time. Uh, she loves it and it was really an incredible experience for her for 19 years. If, if there was ever a time to step back from coaching and try something different, it was now. Although Lisa is happy with her decision, there are days where she wants to be on the court coaching her team to victories. When the team was competing in the fall, I was missing it terribly. Like I, I, I was so excited to see them be successful, but I really, really wanted to be out there and, and be a part of it. For your Cougar News Spotlight, I'm Marissa Scott. A 24-hour event was put on by the American Cancer Society two weeks ago at Santa Clarita Valley's Central Park. This event raised money for the cancer treatment and research. Michelle Loop has more on the event. SAD American Cancer Society recently held their annual Relay for Life at Central Park. This year's theme being Give Cancer the Boot. Many of those in attendance had their own story to tell. Some of those have lost loved ones to cancer, some of those have survived cancer, and many of those are still in the fight against cancer. Later that day at 9 p.m., those in attendance gathered at the stage for the Luminaria ceremony. Cancer survivor Jackie Solano read the Luminaria candle lighting poem and lit the first candle. I am a warrior, so it should be no surprise. Cancer pushes me down, but I choose to rise. After every candle was lit in the crowd, a lap of silence was taken letting those in attendance reflect on how cancer has affected their lives. In the beginning of the time that I started Relay for Life, my uncle was diagnosed with cancer. In my freshman year of high school, my uncle actually passed away from cancer. The Peach family has been affected by cancer in many ways. First with Brad's mom, and now his wife, Laura. She was diagnosed March of this year with a squamous cell carcinoma, which is a skin cancer. Everybody's here for the same reason. We're all here to fight against cancer, to raise money, to for the research of cancer and all kinds of stuff. I love like the community comes together as a whole. The SCB branch of the American Cancer Society has raised $350,000 since September 1st, 2016, and will continue to raise money until August 31st of this year. One of the reasons we do what we do is when, you know, this first started 35 years ago, or 37 years ago now, um, not in, in, in Santa Clarita, but when the event really, itself really first really started. Nice. Um, there was a less than, there was about a 30% survival rate with cancer at that point in time. Today there is a 50% survival rate in cancers. That is the difference Real for Life and the American Cancer Society has made. With Cougar News, I'm Michelle Lutz. Even 100 degree heat couldn't stop the regional Special Olympics on Sunday. Fun and friendly competition brought people from the Tri-Valley together in this pre-Worlds qualifier. Hundreds of athletes gathered at Hart High School on Sunday to compete in the regional Special Olympics. People of all ages participated in track and field events like long jump, the 50 meter run, and the 800. Rihanna Dixon swept the wheelchair race, one of her favorite events. I spoke to Rihanna's mom about the benefits of the Special Olympics. She could have all these friends around her and that she does well when she races. Medals were given to the top three finishers in every race. CHP officer Josh Greengard had the honor of awarding the athletes. Oh, these guys are hard workers, man. They're, they're huge hard workers, and, and their passion and their dedication to this sport and their, their Olympians is just amazing. The passion showed on and off the track as athletes celebrated with friends and teammates. Uh, we've got a lot of gold medals. We've got a lot of silver, bronze, but everybody is a winner at Special Olympics. They're happy for themselves, but they're excited for their own team. Special Olympics teaches team. And most of these athletes are friends off the track, whether it's school and once they're out of school, they remain friends. The next Special Olympics Summer Games will be held in 2019 in Abu Dhabi. With Cougar News, I'm Rachel Maurer. Coming up on Cougar News, residents fight to restore a local hiking trail to its former beauty. Plus, earlier this month, Castaic Lake held the Open Water National Championships. Stay tuned. In a home fire, can your family safely escape in two minutes? 
I heard my oldest son holler for mommy, and all I could see was smoke. The boys, we never really worked with them, I guess, on telling them what to do if there's a fire. We lost our child. We lost everything. Make sure you can safely escape a fire. Practice your two-minute drill. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Make your plan today. Cougar News. You could be running into somebody new around town, but it might not be who you'd expect. Keep an eye out for the latest resident. You could be running into somebody new around town, but it might not be who you'd expect. Keep an eye out for the latest resident in Santa Clarita, and you just might find yourself a new friend. Sam Josen tells us more. Here at the 2017 Amgen Tour, there's someone people from all over town came to look for. And it isn't one of the racers. It's this little guy. Since his debut at the Cowboy Festival on April 22nd, Sammy Clarita has been the city's new favorite friend. He's part of the city's 30th anniversary celebration, and you can find him hanging out around town and at city events. Started throwing around ideas to get people to um, check out all the places and what we could put there to kind of draw them to see new and different things that they hadn't seen before. And then it, we came up with the idea of Sammy Clarita. If you spot Sammy out and about, it's not by mistake. He's to place somewhere, a clue to where he is is posted on social media, and the hunt begins. Once someone finds Sammy, they get to keep him and the game starts all over again. But it's not just fun and games when it comes to this somewhat unusual anniversary celebration. Social media is playing a key role in the hunt for Sammy and in community outreach. We have, I think it was over 300 more followers since we've started Sammy Clarita, which is really exciting. We weren't seeing such a huge increase before, so I think we can assume that Sammy Clarita has generated a lot more interest in our Instagram account. If you still haven't found Sammy, don't worry. He'll be around through December 15th. For Cougar News, I'm Sam Josen. For a worn down hiking trail, one Facebook post is making all the difference. Kaja Doris reports about how the Santa Clarita community is eager to clean up Bouquet Falls. Former campground and now popular hiking trail Bouquet Falls has been a go-to family spot for decades. But recently, the locals have noticed a change in scenery. A place known for its natural beauty is now covered in graffiti, trash, and broken bottles. And the people of Santa Clarita want to do something about it. Residents created a Facebook post trying to spread the word about what's happened to the area, which has reached hundreds of people. And many people who still try to enjoy the trails regularly have also expressed their concern about the area as well. I hate it. It bugs me. It makes me not want to bring my family here anymore. I love this place. I've been coming here for 13 years, and it's been this way that whole time. It's gotten nothing but worse and worse and worse with the state of it. When I first came here, it wasn't so bad. There was uh, only a little bit up and down by the waterfalls up top and a couple things here. But I can say over the years, it's progressed probably at least tenfold. It's a beautiful place. I'm here right now with two different families, with three kids. I come here with my dogs, who I'm here with right now. Um, I would really, really appreciate to see, you know, see this place cleaned up and be able to come here and have picnics and enjoy the family the place that it should be. Residents are still working on a plan to get the area cleaned up and welcome anyone in the community who may want to be a part of the restoration process. For Cougar News, I'm Kaja Doros. Rachel, have you been to any good dances lately? Everybody loves a good dance, George. Vanessa Marcone has entertainment. Thanks guys, let's see what's going on around the valley. Last week, the Performing Arts Center hosted May Dances here at COC. 
George Ventura got the chance to go see the show and talk to some of the participants. The dance department presents May Dances, an informal dance concert featuring faculty and student choreography. May Dances took place at the Performing Arts Center at the College of the Canyons. The performance is open to the community. The dance department hosts the event. May Dances featured solo and duet acts, also group dances as well. We were able to catch up with a member of the dance group, Audio Mind, which performed at the May Dances. So here at the College of the Canyons, we have this uh, showcase where we uh, show dances called the May Dances and it's at the Performing Arts Center right here. Um, part of Audio Mind, which is the group that I'm in, uh, our, our whole team is built off like good vibes, family oriented, um, different type of dances, like urban dances, all like jazz, it's contemporary, hip hop, and uh, through that, like we just want the audience to engage like our feelings and our slangness, I guess you can say, and just give positive vibes and just uh, just like us for what we do, uh, which is dance, you know? John is one of the many students who practice hard every day to make sure that they are ready to display all their moves when it's showtime. From hip-hop solos and duets to modern dance and ballroom, May Dances brings you a little bit of everything. For any students who are interested in performing or want more info on dance, should visit www.canyons.edu for more details. Reporting live for Cougar News, George and Tara. And don't forget to follow us on all of our social media accounts. And here's a story that changes the way you see circus entertainment. Two brothers have created an act of silly humor, acrobatics, and fun tricks to wow and bewilder you. Alex Toledano has more. Hello, my name is Alex. My name is Dimitri. And we are the Bistrevsky Brothers! The Bistrevsky Brothers are a duo of entertainers that have definitely caught the eye of many people. Okay, first of all, I don't sing. True. And second of all, I definitely do not dance. He does not. Performing from California all the way to Japan, the Bostrovsky brothers have brought a unique flair of originality to the entertainment industry. So, like, it, it, we had a random set of skills for like performing, and we had performed before. And then we moved to LA, and we got recruited into a circus school by like we were just at a Starbucks, and a lady came up to us and was like, "Hey, do you guys want to do circus?" You guys and we're like, "No it. way!" <laughs> she gave us her card, and then later, <laughs> like, it, random fate brought us to circus, and we loved it. Although the Bestrovsky brothers initially trained with the circus, they decided to take their act as a solo duo. We, it was rough in the beginning to work as a duo. Not rough because we were also roommates. And that was hard, it was hard to take the separation of training rehearsals, which could be intense, mm -hmm. to home and like cooking dinner and not being in that same mode. But once we figured out how to make it work, it, it works fantastically. When asked about their training, the brothers confessed that although they love what they do, the hours put into perfecting their act can be overwhelming. I got a special song, special request. Any special requests? Hey Jude. Hey Jude, you got it. Here we go. Hey Jude, don't be a But despite the hours of training, their charisma and amazing energy cultivate the sense that we can still pursue our dreams, regardless of the work that it takes to get there. This is Alejandra with Cougar News. That's it for entertainment. Back to you, Rachel. Santa Clarita has many restaurants in its valley, but did you know we have one of the oldest restaurants in Los Angeles County? Saugus Cafe has been around for over 100 years. Cougar News reporter Sam Delgado with more on the story. Most Santa Clarita residents have most likely driven by or heard of the Saugus Cafe. But what they don't know is that this year will mark its 130-year anniversary. The diner opened in 1887, which makes it one of the oldest restaurants in the Los Angeles County. It was originally located next to the Saugus train station before moving to its primary location in 1898. Through the years, the restaurant has had its fair share of presidents walk through the doors. President Benjamin Harrison ate at the diner in 1891, and President Theodore Roosevelt stopped by in 1903. The restaurant also had many locals that have been going for years. Yes, I used to come here when I was in high school on our way to go up to the mountains on the weekend to go hunting. We'd stop off for breakfast and we could go next door to the service store, the liquor store, and they sold ammunition. And then on our way back, we would uh, stop off and have lunch. And uh, Saugus was good then, it's great now, and uh, we've loved it all these years. 
It's loyal customers like Bill Lang, who's been going to the Saugus Cafe since the 1950s, that have helped keep the diner open for so long. It's good food, it's great family service, everything's good about it. It's Old Town Newhall. The workers at the restaurant have also played a crucial part in making the diner run so smoothly for so long. Uh, I think good customer service, good food, a lot of history here. A lot of old regulars come here, they love it. With such a rich history, Saugus Cafe is a place you won't want to miss. Be sure to check out this historic landmark located on Railroad Avenue in Valencia. For Cougar News, I'm Sam Delgado. The coffee kiosk has become a much needed pit stop for many students stressing over classwork. Recently, Cougar News shined a spotlight on the man. Oh, I messed up. <laughs> Ethan Espinoza, who recently graduated from the Master's College. You'll see him around campus. So what is he doing here? I've been studying art on the side and um, drawing customers every now and then, but I'd love to have more time to do that. The coffee kiosk in the Central Commons is family owned and operated. Good morning, ladies. Ethan got his degree in business, so it only makes sense for him to run the business. Coffee kiosk uh, is an idea that my uncle and my dad had um, to start a drive through coffee business. And Santa Clarita made the most sense because um, there's a lot of communities in Santa Clarita. And then in 1996, they opened the first um, coffee kiosk drive through off of Lyons. And it's still open to this day. Coffee kiosk um, here at COC opened in 2008. We'd like to open up another location on campus. I'd like it to be on the other side of campus, closer to the athletic department and Hasley Hall. Um, and if we do that, then I would like to carry more um, like protein shakes, which we do carry here, uh, but we would promote it a lot more. Um, when I'm not working in coffee kiosk, um, inside or outside of the store, um, I also coach um, high school football at Santa Clarita Christian School. Um, so right now we're doing off-season lifting, um, which is really in the morning. It starts at 4.45 a.m. Um, so I go there before I come to work here. I'm just really thankful that we have um, such a cool place to operate um, the business. Although the coffee kiosk keeps Ethan pretty busy, this is where he comes a few mornings a week to help his community. For the Cougar News Spotlight, I'm Betty Varela. Art is an expression, whether it is reflection of self or society around us. We get to view the world through another lens. That's why College of the Canyons is proud to show off its students' work in their annual student art exhibition. Michael Shada has more. If you've ever stopped by the coffee kiosk, you've probably passed by the art gallery. And whether or not you've been there, you have a real good reason to check it out now, as COC is hosting its 21st annual student art exhibition. The pieces done here are very important to students, not only because they're on display for all of us here, but some pieces are even submitted for review by a guest drawer from the LA art community. I spoke with local student and artist Angel Wynn, and she had a lot to say about the art gallery and what it brings to COC. Art gallery, I know that not a lot of people know about it, even though it's been here for many decades at COC and I think it's a good experience because it's it could open a lot of minds and um, it allows students to explore more with what they want to do because I know that a lot of people would want to do something creative but they don't know like how to actually express that through um, like different majors so with this they can see what um, COC actually has to offer in terms of classes and courses and what you can used to build your abilities with art. So I think it'll be very beneficial if you come visit the art gallery. COC's wide variety of students allows for a wide variety of art. Black and white to colors everywhere, paper art to social issues, even sharks fighting dragons. Come check out the art, you won't be disappointed. One of the many benefits that art has is that it stimulates the brain to think creatively. But did you know that it can also help citizens, senior citizens as they get older? Here is Teresa Juarez with the story. At the Santa Clarita Senior Center, 
Art classes are offered to those that need to find a way to keep themselves busy or have fun. Frida Morrison, who is a retired nurse and an instructor for the art class, gives credit to Mary Galea for starting the art classes at the senior center. One of the real teacher I had like a year and a half ago, she um, gave me the first, um, you know, like I said, she opened the windows to the watercolor when I started taking classes here. The art classes paved a way for many of the seniors to meet new people, especially for Phyllis Koskula, who moved to Santa Clarita three months ago from Arizona. My husband and I just thought this would be a nice place to come to meet people, and we've really enjoyed it. They're wonderful here. The benefits of taking an art class goes beyond just having fun. It also helps them with their personal struggles. The paintings that they do make them feel that they are contributing to their community, as well as making sure that they are still part of society. Elaine Margellis, who was just diagnosed with Alzheimer's, finds that taking the class is a huge benefit for her. This is a big help for me because it, it make, keeps things moving, so I enjoy it. For Frida Morrison, it is one of the ways to fill up her time. It's something I really like to do. And uh, what can I say? The nature is beautiful. People is beautiful. <laughs> I like to copy all that, you know. Phyllis, who is a professional painter that has been teaching for art for 25 years, says people are never too old to learn. No matter how old you get or what you have learned previously, you're always going to get something out of a class. For Cougar News, I'm Teresa Juarez. Still to come on Cougar News, a local swimmer tells us about his road to recovery. Also, highlights from the Amgen Tour. Don't go anywhere. The American Red Cross urgently needs blood and platelet donations and asks donors to schedule an appointment to give now. Every two seconds, someone in the United States needs blood. Your blood donation is critical and can help save lives. Please, schedule an appointment today. Download the Blood Donor app, visit redcrossblood.org, or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. You can make a difference. They've been uh, very caring. They care about every, every single student that's in the class. Everyone seems to be like pretty friendly with each other. Like no one's really afraid to ask each other for help. Working with other people, not uh, being ornery, uh, actually you know, listening to what people say, collaborating with them to create a really good product. It's great to use the same stuff the pros use, especially at a community college. Hopefully we give them a pathway to, to have their creativity uh, showcased. I've gotten a great education. I love the access to equipment. I've made lifelong friendships. I have great teachers. A place where you can go have a unique experience with very interesting animals, wolves. Shadowland, located in Lake Hughes, offer people of all ages the opportunity to play and laugh with 10 different Alaskan wolves. Yoav Lippman tells us more about this amazing place. For many people, animal shelters are limited to take care of dogs and cats, sometimes even cows. But not many people expect to see wolves when they walk into one. And Shadowland Foundation is a nonprofit educational organization, and our mission is to educate, not eradicate, the wolf. And um, we teach about their plight over history, and we teach about their plight today. And we raised, hand raised, 10 Alaskan timber wolves, and we um, train them to meet people so that they can look in your eyes and you can look in their eyes and they can touch your hearts the way they've touched ours and hopefully to save them in the future. Um, they, we are not their prey. They are not man-eaters. Um, they are the original dog, um, man's best friend. Um, we used to live and hunt on the land together and help each other, which is how the domestic dog actually evolved from the wolf. The wolves 
are a very misunderstood species because of all the misconceptions and myths surrounding it. We almost lost them completely and now the recovery has been very successful for the environment. This actually all started for me was at the age of eight, I became part of the wild nature. I, I started to walk abouts in the forest. And how long ago that started for me? Well, I'm 58, so it started five decades ago. I'm building a park, a spiritual park. It's a forest within the forest. It, uh, it's where nature meets your neighbor. And we're the neighbors, the two leggers. And remember that wolves are also a man's best friend. Reporting for Cougar News, this is Yoav Liebman. Last week, the Amgen Bicycle Tour came through Santa Clarita. But what kind of impact did it have for our city? Our reporter, Luis Gomez, has more on this story. The American will give this one a go today, but whether he... The Amgen Tour of California charged through Santa Clarita as riders sprinted for a win during stage four of the race. Riders rode as far as 200 kilometers to finish on Magic Mountain Parkway just outside of the mall. But Cougar News is wondering, just how much of an impact does the race bring to our city? Well, California in general is a very beautiful state. Um, you got a good, interesting road coming here, some mountains, some flat parts, so it's a little bit of everything. You know, people show up in large numbers, we got a good crowd here, beautiful place. And um, we have enough space to actually build our structure, you know, the finish line, the team parkings the anti-doping control, the VIP tents, the media place. It's just a whole setup uh, that's really uh, tempting to come back here and the city is really easy and uh, to work with. They, they like to have us here, so it's just a win-win for the city. They like, they like to have us and we like to be here. Performance Cyclery, local mainstay for riders in the region, says the race does have an effect on business. Well, it's actually a great event, especially for the local bike shops because it brings awareness to cycling. Uh -huh. It also does um, help sales because it gets people excited about cycling. I mean, we're, we're really excited. We're lucky to have it. We're one of the only cities that have had it every single time that the event has um, gone through to town. People will go out, they'll watch the race, they'll see the cyclists, they get excited, they come in, they start looking at bikes, they start think thinking about cycling. I mean, we're lucky to live in Santa Clarita because our city um, does spend a lot of resources on um, cycling. We have 60 miles of paved um, bike paths that are separate from the cars. Um, we have a lot of open spaces for mountain biking. Um, and just to you people that are driving a car, just be careful and be aware of cyclists. Hoping riders keep you safe out there. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Luis Gomez. Summer is just around the corner. Time for some swimming, right, Rachel? That's right, George. We have some awesome swimmers right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Marissa Scott has sports. Thanks, guys. Everyone knows athletes like LeBron James and Mike Trout, but here in Santa Clarita, there's a star athlete that could soon be a household name. Adam Osowski isn't dominating on land, but in the water. High school senior and varsity swimmer Adam Osowski has been swimming since he was four years old. After trying many different sports, Adam knew swimming was his favorite. Um, my dad got me into it when I was four. I wasn't really looking at I tried soccer and baseball, but I just loved swimming the most out of all of them. Since Adam has started swimming for Hyde High School as a freshman, he has always been at the top of his age group. Last year in the CIF Southern Section Division I Championships, Ozowski placed fourth in the 100 and eighth in the 200. Because of his achievements and hard work, Ozowski had three colleges interested in offering him scholarships. Last October, Ozowski's dream seemed to come crashing down after he shattered two bones in his arm. I was at a friend's house and we were just messing around and I was on a bike and I tried hopping a curb and I flew off the bike and I landed out on my, arm, my right arm and broke my radius and my ulna. His thoughts of swimming scholarships drowned his mind when he found out that he needed to get surgery to fix his broken arm. I was upset at myself because I was doing really well in swimming and I was in a good place and I was, it was a long road to recovery. Ozowski underwent surgery a couple days after the accident in hopes that his NCAA promises wouldn't end there. I was more scared like I wouldn't be able to get back to where I was like swimming wise for a few months I knew I was going to be worse but I came back faster than I thought I would. When it came time to tell Columbia about his accident Ozowski was worried the scholarship would be revoked. I emailed him the day after saying like if you don't want me to come over like I completely 
completely understand like it was my fault and then he's like no just come on over and see if you like it still. Ozowski's recovery was long and hard but his desire to get back to his dream was even stronger. This was just like the desire to get back to where I was because I really wanted I was in a good place and I just wanted to get back to where I was. Fully recovered and better than ever, Ozowski recently set a league record time at the Foothill League prelims and was crowned co-male swimmer of the Foothill League finals. Ozowski has since committed to Columbia and will attend the college this upcoming fall. I was pretty excited still. Like I didn't know how I was going to feel because like I just broke my arm. and It ended up being fine and the guys on the team were great. For this week's Cougar News Spotlight, I'm Marissa Scott. As you heard earlier, the MGen Tour recently raced through Santa Clarita. But that wasn't the only major event local sports fans got to enjoy. Castaic Lake hosted the Open Water National Championships with several events, including the always okay, grueling 10K. That's 6.2 miles of open water swimming. The men's event featured more than 20 athletes from around the United States and four other countries. Many of those in the water competed at the Olympics in Brazil last summer. Malibu resident Jordan Wilanowski pulled away to punch his ticket to the World Championships in Hungary this summer. The women later took to the course. American Ashley Twitchell was tops in that field. College of the Canyons has a new state champion. Diana Ellis won the 3,000 meter steeplechase in a time of just over 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Jessica Ruiz took eighth in the women's 5K. Michelle Sylvester was sixth in the high jump and the Cougar men ran a season best time in the 4x400 relay. That will do it for sports. Back to you, Rachel. Thanks, Marissa. 23,000 acres of strawberries are planted each year in California, and Americans on average consume 3.4 pounds of the tasty fruit. So it's no surprise that each year a nearby community celebrates with a very, very good day. Amanda Moulton takes a look. This past weekend was the 34th annual Strawberry Festival in Oxnard. Along with the consumption of 1.5 million strawberries, the festival also hosted 50 food booths, live concerts on two stages, 200 arts and crafts, and rides and attractions in Strawberry Land for the kids. Those that came to the festival hungry for strawberries had their choices of pretty much anything strawberry, ranging from strawberry popcorn to strawberry pizza. To quench your thirst, the festival had strawberry beer, wine, and smoothies, and much more. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Amanda Moulton. That does it for this edition of Cougar News. I'm Rachel Maurer. Remember, you can catch us on the web at CougarNews.com. And I'm George Ventura. You can also send us news tips and story ideas to our Twitter handle at CLC underscore Cougar News. Have a good night, everybody.